Alex Kuttner. Now, let's uh, turn to other stories. The uh, Virgin boss, Sir Richard Branson, has attacked as insane the government's decision to hand control of the West Coast mainline to a competitor. First Group are promising travellers cheap fares and a better service. The company will pay the government £5.5 billion for the 13-year contract. That's far more than Virgin had offered. Sir Richard insisted, though, the decision was risky and said it was unlikely Virgin would ever bid for a train contract again. This report by our transport correspondent, Richard Brescott, contains some flash photography. It's the end of an era. No more flag waving, no more fanfares, and he didn't see it coming. After 15 years, Sir Richard Branson, master of publicity, is off the railways. From December, the UK's biggest rail company, First Group, will run the services from London to Glasgow. We're delighted to have won the contract. This is a fantastic first step for us in rebuilding our rail portfolio and to do it by winning what is really the largest train operating company in the land is quite a great thrill and we have great plans for this railway and so we're very excited to get started. We do believe the government have made a, a wrong decision again and we've been through this on, on uh, three other occasions um, where we were runners up um, and on, on each of those occasions the companies either went bust um, or, or ran into financial difficulties. So, um, you know, so we do, we, you know, we, we, we do believe that, that, that they made, made a mistake. After 15 years, that famous Virgin logo is going to disappear from Britain's train, certainly for the time being anyway. But apart from a change in the colour scheme, what else might change for the millions of passengers that catch these trains every year? First Group will buy 11 new trains, adding 12,000 extra seats to ease congestion. New direct services will link London to Blackpool, Telford, Shrewsbury and Bolton. And there's a promise of better catering on board. But there are also warnings that jobs will go and fares will rise to help pay for it all. But what do the passengers think? Well, I think it's a shame in a way. I like Richard Branson. And, uh... You know, I'm sorry to, that he's lost it. Virgin's had this since 97. Well, surely there must be some sort of improvement that this new company or this new franchise can offer. This all comes down to whether First Group can attract millions more customers to the line. Two years ago, another company, National Express, had to give up the East Coast franchise early because it couldn't make it pay. There are fears the same might happen here. First Group have almost bet the farm on this. It's, it's a massive challenge. The group is facing the renewal of quite a lot of its franchises over the next few years. So if it wants to stay in railways, it's got to start winning. We've run some figures. If it can get growth of about 5% every year for the whole 15 years and can perhaps keep its costs going up by no more than 2 or 3% a year, then it might just do it. Virgin will be leaving the station for the last time this December. Richard Westcott, BBC News, Houston. Well, let's uh, go to Euston now and speak to our correspondent, uh, Mike uh, Sargent. Passengers uh, concerned about this, Mike? Well, passengers have been made promises by train operating companies before that the companies haven't been able to keep. Um, and First Group is certainly making a lot of promises about how it's going to improve this line. It's confident it can make a success of it and offer an improved service to that which Virgin was providing. But Virgin says that it has had overwhelming support on Twitter and other outlets today from its passengers. And most of those that I've spoken to today seem to think that Virgin was offering a, a, a pretty good service, a punctual service. The trains were clean, the customer service was pretty good. But First Group think they can better it and justify the five and a half billion pounds they've offered for this franchise. Mike at uh, Euston, thank you very much. Let's get uh, more now from uh, Richard Hebditch from the Campaign for Better Transport. Uh, First Group uh, with big plans, big modernisation, smart ticketing amongst other things as well. Is it just a coincidence they've offered more money than Virgin? Well, let's, uh, um, I think they need to win Western franchises, so they're, they're bidding big. Um, but it really shows some of the problems with the franchise process. It's very much simply about how much money you can bid to run the services. What we'd like to see is much more about the quality of the service as well, and that's assessed properly by the Department for Transport. At the moment, there are simply kind of basic, two basic questions. Will the service collapse? Uh, and they've answered that, that question. And then the second question is about how much money they'll give, and that's what the, the real choice is made by, by DFT. And I think what worries us is about making sure that the quality of the service, improving the service, improving 
stations and improving the passenger experience. That should be much more to the fore in the way that, that um, franchise bids are assessed. Yeah, I mean, they have pledged to do that, as I, as I say, but I, I suppose the fear will be that uh, prices might go up because we've already seen them go up significantly or due to go up, haven't they, with this uh, percentage rise above uh, the rate of inflation? We have. I, I think the government was hoping for some good news today with the, with the franchise announcement after yesterday's bad news about fares going up so much. Um, and there's some promising signs um, from first in terms of what they're saying about trying to reduce the price of the, the walk-on fares for the peak time. Uh, we don't need to see kind of what's in the detail of, of what the rest of the fares package is, because at the moment we have in the UK a system where the ordinary fares that most people pay are very expensive, but there are a few advanced fares you can get quite cheaply. But actually what we need to look at is making sure that the ordinary fares are affordable for everyone as well. How do you feel about the fact that Virgin may never bid for another rail franchise again? In some ways it's a shame. Virgin have quite high scores in terms of passenger satisfaction on the, on the West Coast main line. By, by um, that's partly because they have fewer commuters using sure the service and commuters tend to be a lot more gratuity than the longer distance travellers. But I think they have made quite significant improvements and, and the franchise system is, is based around having yeah, I mean, enough people bidding for the franchises so that it is a competition. There is a worry I think if you have less companies involved about whether you get that kind of incentive to improve services through franchising. But we could also look at the way the franchise system works and try and improve that I think in the future much more as well. Okay, Richard Hedditch, uh, Campaigns Director for Campaign for Better Transport. Thank you very much indeed for joining um, us. And there's some promising signs um, from first. Now, unemployment has fallen to, to its lowest level the, for the a year. Fares for, for peak time. Uh, we don't need to see kind of what's in the detail of, of what the rest of the fares package is, because at the moment we have in the UK a system where the ordinary fares that most people pay are very expensive, but there are a few uh, advanced fares you can get quite cheaply. But actually what we need to look at is, is making sure that the ordinary fares are affordable for everyone as well. Uh, how do you feel about the fact that Virgin may never bid for another rail franchise again? Uh, in some ways it's a shame. Virgin have quite high uh, scores in terms of passenger satisfaction on, on the West Coast Main Line. Um, that's partly because they have fewer commuters using the service and commuters tend to be a lot more grouchy than, than longer distance travellers. But I think they have made quite significant improvements and, and the franchise system is, is based around having enough people bidding for the franchises so that it is a competition. There is a worry I think if you have less companies involved about whether you, you, you get that kind of uh, incentive to improve services through franchising. But, but we could also look at, at the way the franchise system works and try and improve that I think in the future much more as well. Okay, Richard Hedditch, uh, Campaigns Director for Campaign for Better Transport. Thank you very much indeed for joining us.